Hi there, and today I'm gonna to tell you five things that are really cute that the Danes say that you can add into your Danish conversation. Stay tuned. Come along as my Danish husband and our two sons show this American what it means to live a life in Denmark. My new Danish life. Hi there and welcome back. If you're new to my channel, my name is Kelly and I'm an American who lives in Denmark. And I've lived in Denmark for five years and I've noticed some things that the Danes say to other Danes that's part of their common conversation that I just happen to find very charming. And I wanna share them with you today. Before we get started with that, take a look at this. I was just vaccinated, got my first shot for the Corona vaccine. So far, so good. Let me know if you've been vaccinated and, and what your situation has been with that. I'm quite curious to know. Also, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please consider do so. I would love to have you along as a subscriber. And if you are a subscriber, thank you so much for clicking the red button. I really appreciate you being here. Now I know that you probably have seen this maybe before, if you've seen a couple of my videos. I made a couple of videos from my desk, which is where I'm at right now, because I'm actually able to get some natural light from this place, even though what you see behind you is just not appealing. For whatever reason, this room has not been given any attention when it comes to decor. <laughs> the only thing that you could probably see are some of the pictures that my kids have created at school throughout the years. And that's pretty much all we've got going on. We've got a lot of holes in the walls, so not very charming, not very Danish, but we have this really kind of tacky white wallpaper from like the 1960s or something that needs to come down. So I'm really at the point where I don't wanna put anything on that wall until the wallpaper comes down. It doesn't seem to make my husband want to do it any faster. Um, and I'm about ready to start doing it myself, but um, I'm afraid I'm gonna ruin the wall. So we probably, uh, <laughs> we'll probably wait for him. But you came to hear some charming Danish sayings and I would love to share some things that I have heard in Denmark. And some things that were a little bit of a culture shock. You know, I'm married to a Dane, but that means absolutely nothing, okay? These are things that Danish people say to other Danish people. I'm American. My husband and I started speaking English with each other. We've been together for 14 years. We still speak English with each other. And so these are not some things that he would say to me because if he did, I would be thinking, what are you talking about? <laughs> But I have heard other people or even read it on like Facebook in different places. And if you haven't followed me on Facebook, you should get over there and do that. Or I've also seen it on Instagram. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, you should get over there and do that because I post a lot of little tiny videos on Instagram that are quite entertaining from time to time. So this is something that I really only experienced after moving to Denmark. So what are they? Let's get started with them right now. This is the word toluca. Now toluca really just means congratulations, right? So you say it whenever you want to congratulate somebody. Maybe they've graduated, maybe they had a new baby, they've got a new job. Anything where you would want to congratulate someone, you could say toluca. But I think it's quite charming when Danes will congratulate you on the, the birthday of your child. My kids are 11 and eight, okay? So it doesn't really matter how old they are. But if my son has a birthday, they could say, oh, to Luke Maham. And it's kind of like saying congratulations with him. So they're congratulating me, the mother, for my son's birthday, which is really strange, you know, for me. Not a bad thing. It's just something I'm not used to. I mean, they could say, oh, well, tell him happy birthday. That's probably what we would say in the U.S. We would probably say, well, wish him a happy birthday from me, right? but we wouldn't congratulate the parents on our child's birthday. So that's something that's a little different, but I think it's quite charming because I mean, hey, you know, I'm the mom. I, I did a lot of work, you know, creating this child and raising him and all different things. So getting the congratulations when my son turns another year, I don't know, it still makes me feel like I have a part in it, you know? I don't know, I think it's quite charming. Another one is the phrase velvacama. 
And you could say this as you're saying, you know, you're welcome. Uh, for example, if someone says, oh, thank you for something and you say welcome. But this is different. This is a different situation. It has a different meaning. And again, this is another culture shock that I had because I'm sitting at my job and I'm eating lunch or I'm starting to eat lunch and someone comes up to me and smiles and says, Bell Bacama. And I thought, oh crap, you know, what is he, what is he talking about? I mean, I froze because I didn't know what was going on. It was something that had never happened to me before. I had lived in Denmark for years before this had happened. And the thing is, is that I've worked with kids for over 20 years, right? So kids tend to forget to use their manners from time to time. You know, maybe I'm giving kids like candy or something and nobody is saying thank you. And I'm just like, what is going on? And I, I might say something like, you're welcome. And then they'll say, oh, sorry, thank you. You know what I mean? But the fact is, is that when this person came up to me and said, Val become, I thought, why are they saying you're welcome? Is it the same situation where I should have said thank you to something and I did it and I'm being completely rude and they're calling me out on it? No, that is not the case in this situation. Many times when you are eating in Denmark and someone wants to wish you a good meal, in English we use like the French or Italian or whatever where we, I think it's French, we're saying of bon appetit, right? We would just say that. Just like a lot of times when we sneeze, we say gesundheit. We use words from other languages. We don't have our own word in English a lot of times. But um, yeah, so we would just say bon appetit. You know, well, thank you very much. I'm just gonna go ahead and eat. Yeah, feeling good. But I had no idea that their version of bon appetit is very similar to the word you're welcome. So it was a bit of a culture shock for me. But knowing it now, it's quite... I don't know, it's it's quite charming if I think about it because it's a really nice thing to say to someone. I wouldn't always go up to someone and say bon appetit. I think that's what the waiter or waitress would say when they bring out your food or you know, you might say it with people you know, but I don't know if you would just casually go up to someone in your work and say, oh, enjoy your meal. Be like, I think that's an extra nice thing. The third one is not an actual saying. Maybe there are words to it that I don't know or whatever, but Danes, like pretty much everyone else, like to talk about the weather from time to time, right? And the thing is, is that the weather on your birthday signifies how you've been, I don't know, maybe throughout the year or something. So if it's a beautiful, sunny day, I mean, of course, it's not always going to be warm in Denmark, let's be honest. My birthday's in January, so, you know, the chances of me being good on my birthday might be pretty slim to none, but who knows. But the thing is, is that if it's really nice weather on your birthday, the Danes will say, oh, you know, you were a really good person, or you've been really good lately, or something like that, because the weather is good because of you and because of your birthday. So I think that's kind of a funny thing to say. I don't think we have anything like that in the US, at least not where I'm from, where we would say, oh, you must have been good if the weather is good on your birthday. But it's quite a charming thing. But I, I don't know exactly how it would work the other way if they say, man, this weather is crap. What'd you do? <laughs> the Danes will have to let me know down in the comments about that because I have never heard anybody make a negative comment if you're, you know, the weather is bad on your birthday. So let me know about that one. Number four is actually four and four and a half perhaps because I've heard them used together. And, but I mean, obviously they're, they're two separate things so they could be used separately. But these, <laughs> these I read while I was watching TV with my husband. I don't know what we were watching. Obviously something in Danish. We have to have the subtitles on because most of the time, I don't understand the things that I hear. I know I have hearing problems. I don't think that's the, the case. I think it's mostly just Danish being confusing. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm much better if I read things so I can understand more. I don't know. Maybe that's just how I'm wired in my brain. So we have the subtitles on um, when we're watching TV. So at least I can understand maybe a fourth of what's going on. I mean, I don't know. And there was something that came on the screen. I don't know what we were watching, but it had these two terms, 
Tapin a Papin and Konga Gulagul. And I thought, what? Or maybe we were watching it in English and then they said that as like a translation and I thought, what? That's probably what it was because I understood what was happening. You know, all of a sudden it's not like, what's top and a pop, pop top and a pop in? <laughs> you know? In English, we have these sayings like the bee's knees and the the cat's meow. I think we also say something like the cat's pajamas. I don't know. But it's kind of like saying, you know, you're, you know, how do you explain that? I mean, you probably know this if you're really familiar with English, but you know, if I say, oh man, it's the bee's knees, it's something really awesome. You know, and if a person is considered to be the cat's meow or the bee's knees, they're just like a really awesome person. Like, ooh, I'm number one, I'm feeling really good, you know? And I think this is kind of the same thing, you know, where it's like, you're you're doing really well and we're describing you as a person who's kind of like on top and number one kind of thing. So we would say top and a poppin, like top of the pop. I don't I don't know. Is that what it is? And Konga Gulu Konga Gulugul is saying King Carrot. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but if you think about it, why would cats meow make a lot of sense? You know what I mean? But I I have never forgotten those. There's so many terms where I'm constantly asking my husband, what does this mean? What does this mean? And he goes, I tell you this like every week what it means. And it doesn't stick for whatever reason. But this one, it just, I think it's because they're a lot of fun. I I have these in my brain and they're not going anywhere. And I keep trying to find ways to use them. If you're Danish and you're very familiar with these two terms, Put them in a sentence or a situation for me because I would love to know of a different way to use them. I want to put them in like a casual conversation with a Danish person. I just, I think they're so much fun, but I need your help in figuring out all the details. So put that down in the comments, please, for me, so I know how to use them without sounding too weird. And my number five, I hear often from my husband, and I hear it from a lot of other dates. It's just so funny. We were camping. We love to go camping in our caravan um, all throughout the summer as much as we can. And we're sitting in our tent and there is a guy kind of walking by, you know, close by our tent. And he, there's another guy coming and, and they must know each other. I don't know. But there's this saying that it's just, it, it just sounds so appreciative. It just sounds so, you know, honest. It sounds so positive that it's great that you hear it so often. But in a way, I think it's so funny because it's not always about like these big things. And maybe that's part of like the happiness factor that you find in Denmark is that people tend to be happy about even the smallest stuff, right? Okay, so what's the phrase? The phrase is, and is just kind of like saying, man, that's nice, you know, or something like that. But it's kind of like an expression more than it is a sentence. So if I were to just say, ah, you know what I mean? That that could be summed up by saying, you know, because it's just a feeling more than anything else. So these guys were talking about the weather, right? And they're like, very daily, you know, and my husband, <laughs> I don't know, it's like whenever we're somewhere, maybe we're, we're having lunch, we, when we were camping, we went up to, um, like the northern part of Denmark, and it was cloudy out, you know, and it was a bit on the cool side, so we had our, our jackets on, but, you know, we're sitting there eating a fantastic meal, you know, on a picnic table, overlooking the ocean, you know, and he just whips out a void diary, you know, and it's just like, there could be a lot of things you're like, man, I wish it was sunny, man, I wish it was warm or whatever, but he just appreciates the moment. And that happens so often, you know, you're sitting there with a drink, maybe you're sitting there with your coffee or something. Void daily. Well, what is daily? What is nice? You know, but just kind of like being in the moment. And I think to me, that's sweet. That's charming. The idea of expressing 
your contentment, your happiness about your current situation. And I think that's a really kind of great thing about Denmark is that there tends to be more focus on the positive than I think on the negative. And people are so comfortable with kind of like a laid back existence that they take time to appreciate even like these small things. And I think that's a good lesson for a lot of people who aren't living lives like that. So thanks for coming along on this video. Um, maybe there is something on here that you might try using in your conversation if you are someone who is new to using Danish. But if there's something that you feel that is really charming about the Danish language, or maybe about you know how they communicate with each other, let me know about it in the comments below. I would really love to know. Maybe there's some things that I don't know. There's a lot of things that I don't know, but maybe you have something to share that is new to me and I would really like to learn about it. If you've not subscribed to my channel, now would be a good time to do that. And also, if you have not followed me on Facebook or Instagram, I would love to see you over there. It's so great to be able to chat more and also share some more of my funny little videos and things that I post on my Instagram. And if you want to get ideas for places to go in Denmark or places that I feel that the Danes would love to know about that are not in Denmark as well, go over to my blog, mynewdanishlife.com and check that out. Thanks for being here and I hope to see you in another video. And as always, take care.